Brothers and sisters, in our scriptures today, we see the effectiveness of prayer. Esther, through her prayer, is given by God favor with the king and the proper words to speak to him and the proper wisdom as to how to approach the king and in what way to ask the king to spare her life and the life of her people. So because of her prayer and the prayers actually of Mordecai and the other Jews in the capital city of Susa during that time, the Jewish people were saved. That's the Feast of Purim, which will begin actually on sundown of um, next Wednesday, the 20th. Jesus also says to us in the gospel that we are to have confidence in asking the Father. It's very clear that he is likening that our Heavenly Father to earthly parents in the way that an earthly parent knows how to give good things, even if they're wicked, they, they know how to give good things to their children when they ask. And yet Jesus says, how much more then will God, who surpasses an earthly parent, it surpasses the image of our earthly parents, how much more will he give to those who ask him? I like Luke's version even better, because the same saying in Luke, Jesus says, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So in other words, God is willing to give himself to us. Why are we afraid of asking for smaller things? If God is willing to give himself to us by giving us the Holy Spirit, why would we be afraid of asking for smaller graces that we need, like healing, the ability to forgive people, the ability to love people, patience, kindness, all these things? We see how prayer can change the face of the earth, you know. Um, Look, for example, at St. Monica. One might say, well, what did she do that was all that great? She was an incredible intercessor. And without St. Monica, you don't have St. Augustine. And then St. Augustine changes the face of Christianity through his writings and and set the tone for centuries to teach people. All because his mother, Monica, would not give up and prayed for him and prayed for him first and foremost for him to Stop leading a life of dissipation and sin. And second of all, to become a Christian and to be baptized. Or we look at something like the powerful effect of prayer, of confident prayer, that we see in the example of the life of St. John Paul II. When he went to Poland and he asked that the Holy Spirit hit Poland in a particular way. The people there say that during his visit there in 1979... They had an uncanny thing happening where adversaries were all of a sudden peaceful with each other. Communists and and people who were dissident. They were literally able to, to dialogue and to have respectful conversations with each other. Or how about when he consecrated the world and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And we saw quickly thereafter, seven years and nine, nine months later, the Soviet Union ceased to exist. If that's not the intercession of God, then what is? So it encourages us too, because even if we're not Pope, or not uh, the mother of a prolific um, father of the, of the church, like St. Augustine, God can still use our ability to intercede. And first and foremost, we want to have confidence with God that he will give us exactly what we need to have an increase of faith, hope, and love in our own lives, And if he's willing to do these great big things for others, like St. Paul, who has a major conversion, or Jesus liberating the the, um, demoniac, the, the Gadarene demoniac of a legion of demons, then if he's willing to do those kinds of things for for people, then, then why not, through our prayers, have the Lord do amazing things for others by our prayers. Today, we're praying in a special way Our Mass intention is for the healing of somebody who is, quote-unquote, full of cancer. Well, we can pray that God obliterate the cancer and and make her full of normal cells. Why not? We can get a little inventive. Jesus says, whatever two or more of you agree upon on earth, it'll be 
bound in heaven. And sometimes we're like, well, did he really mean that? Does it hurt to try? And what happens if we don't see the good thing that, that we might be looking for? Well, number one, we have to look at our hearts. Are we asking for the right reason? Is it out of love or is it out of selfishness or ambition where we're like, oh, if I, if I obtain this, this cure for this person, people are going to think I'm you know, the it person and they're going to really think I'm something. Well, that would be the wrong intention. St. James says that, that sometimes we ask and we don't receive because we ask wrongly to basically waste it on our own passions. So we want to make sure that the Lord purifies our intentions. And that's good news because the Lord wants our prayer and our hearts united in prayer to be as pure as, as we do. So if we want that, the Lord wants that too. So that's clear. Heaven and earth can correspond in that. When we say, Lord, I'm willing to let you purify my intentions without watering down how generous or how great of things you can do through simple prayer. Because we don't want to dismiss large prayers thinking, oh, God doesn't do that. Or, oh, maybe it's not God's will to heal somebody. We know it's God's will to heal somebody. We can say that with confidence. And I say that because so long as it's somebody, actually, whether it's somebody who's going to heaven or hell, right, on the last day, Jesus is going to raise everybody from the dead, right? That's the ultimate healing, isn't it? Now, we would also want their salvation, too, so we can pray for both, their salvation and for their healing. And if, and if the person isn't healed here in this life, we, we don't say that God didn't answer the prayer, because maybe God used the prayer for their spiritual healing and their salvation so that when they're raised from the dead, they'll be raised body and soul and enjoy heaven. God knows how to take our intentions and our prayers and to work it together for good. So we don't want to think that we can bind God and force God to do our will, nor do we want to limit God that if we are praying for a particular thing and we don't see it, that somehow well, he didn't answer it. Well, maybe he answered it with a, here's something better. Like a good parent, right? Good parent would say, here's something even better. But we, we want today to take courage that like Esther or like St. Monica or John Paul II, that Prayer is powerful that when Jesus says, ask and you shall receive, he means it. 